Hi everyone, it's Penny. I've got another art journal tutorial for you today, but we're going to review a product instead. So what I'm going to do is I had just purchased these Jane Davenport, let me see, Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels. I've been wanting to try them. I haven't taken them out of the box yet, so I'm going to do that with you today. So I don't know about you, but I like to know a little something about products before I go invest in them because there are a lot of art products out there, right? So I'm going to let you know what I find out with these today and we'll just journey through it together. How about it? So come on, let's go. So here's the wonderful thing about journals. Play, 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 play. Find out what your products will do. Find out how they'll work with each other. That's the beautiful part of this. And there are no mistakes. They're just learning possibilities and almost anything you do can be covered over. <laughs> the other wonderful thing about mixed media and journaling. So what I like to do sometimes, now sometimes I'll start with a sketch and I'll do a more formal drawing in my sketchbooks. And sometimes I'll just start with backgrounds and I'll create backgrounds and then I'll go back later and add things to them. It just gives me a jumping off point. So I think what I'm gonna do while I try out these aqua pastels today is I'm gonna create backgrounds. I'm gonna use these, some acrylics. I have some um, Jane Davenport acrylic tubes here. Um, I have some a couple of bright colors of, uh, I guess this is folk art. So different things like that I have some brushes. I've laid out a few things that I know I'm going to want to use. A little palette knife because I think I'm going to use some light molding paste once I get some colors on here to go through some stencils to add some texture and, and different colors. So I just want to create a very interesting background and I think I'm going to do it on both of these pages and maybe just do a drawing over top of one today and save the other one for another lesson. So right now I'm just going to see what I've got with these. Okay, I want to see what they'll do. So I'm just going to put down color different places. Okay, so here are some things that I've discovered already. Depending on how much water you use on your brush and how much color you put in an area. For instance, I'm gonna go back over this green right here. I'm gonna get it pretty saturated. And I put a moderate amount, but not sloppy amount of water on my brush, just enough to move it around. I'm gonna get a much brighter, darker pigmentation on my page than say here, where my strokes were with a lot of white between them, okay? Now, also, you want to clean your brush in between each color. As they, as I move this one in here, it got muddy and some brownish when it hit the red. Take that into consideration. Here, this is when the page was already wet. <clears throat> I had wet it with my brush and then went over it with this, with the crayon, and it didn't seem to want to dissolve quite as well. Now, I'm going to see what it would do if I just put the brush right on my crayon like that. So I can get some color on the page like that, but it still doesn't tend to want to move what's already there. So it seems to, at least on this, this is now the Jane Davenport's um, art journal. And this is her watercolor pages in this art journal, which is really nice when you're doing this sort of thing because it does take um, the water really well. But I found that it does better just to put the aqua pastels on the page dry and then add your water. So now I'm gonna go and just kind of blend some colors and add some different colors of acrylic on top of it. And I'm gonna come back in later and use these again. Okay, but I like them for a base. It gives me a good base color. So here we go. So the first thing I do is I grab my white gesso and I like to use that to kind of blend the different areas that I've added this paint. Also to go over some of the color to make different shades. So it will lighten it and then I'll leave some darker. And I, at this point, I just kind of want to blend everything together. And then I'm going to start adding some more color. Here is some of the Jane Davenport's um, bright yellow acrylic paint in the tube. I keep a basket next to my table with little foam stamps and different supplies that I use to create texture on my page. And this is one of those stamps that I like to use a lot. It can be used all over or just portions of the stamp around the edges. I love it. 
another tool in my tool texture basket is just a little piece of this, I guess, mylar ribbon, I think was used in some floral project at some time and I saved all the scraps and I had used this over and over for years. And it just has a, gives a stencil quality and keeps them from being just flat, solid color. So I use anything from white to black to different colors in it. Using a sponge, you can use a brush. The only thing that I recommend is if you want a cleaner look through your stencils, just get a lot of the paint off of your brush or your sponge. So dab it in the paint and then dab it off on something else so that you have a very light coating on your sponge or brush and that way it won't seep out through the stencil. I'm using this same dotted ribbon as a stencil to add more color to the page. So this is just layer upon layer. I've used the Jane Davenport's red and pink in her acrylic tube collection. And I'm not finished yet. So now I'm bringing out the Golden's Light Molding Paste and another stencil. And this is where my little palette knife is going to come in handy. So I'm going to decide where I want it. And I want to put this edge of that stencil that has a tape measure on it along the right side of my page, but it's not going to show up if I don't add a little bit more dark color to the edge of that page, which you see I've done here. And so now I'm going to layer my stencil over it, use my palette knife, and I'm going to make that light molding paste and just spread it over like butter. Use your fingers to hold that stencil down real flat and close to the page so you get a nice clean line. I clean it off and then I want to use some other parts on the other page. I love the Roman numerals so I'm going to just do a few of those. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a little drying but then I'm going to go away and lay the pages nice and flat and let it dry a little bit longer so that nothing will be ruined when I manipulate water or paint over top of this because I still have more I want to do. So I wanted to get some close-up of what that light molding paste through a stencil looks like. Now if you have a darker background of course that will pop more but the other thing you can do with this is once it's dry then you can go over it um, with some watered down acrylic paints or inks Anything you want to do where well, you can take a little small brush and do some shadowing around it to make it pop a little more. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. We'll be back in a few minutes to check. So I've given it time to dry and now I'm back and I'm deciding that I'm going to place a figure, probably just a face or the bust and um, of a woman. And I'm kind of sketching it out here using the brown crayon color in the aqua pastels. And I know it's hard for you to see here, but this is just me kind of loosely putting the color in. Again, these are water soluble and I can always get them off if I don't like where I've put it. And you're going to see me make some boo-boos and you'll see how I correct them. So now I'm going back in and I'm filling in this person with just gesso. And as that gesso hits these water soluble paints and colors underneath, it doesn't give a plain white opaque coloring to her face and I like that and I can always go back in and add more white to the areas I want to brighten up but I'm just I just want this to be really loose and then if you can see I'm kind of going to feather it out towards the bottom I don't want a defined figure I want her just to pop and then fade into the page and I've decided to go ahead and use both sides of this page because there's some words I want to put on it at the end now when I first start this, as you can see where I've placed her eyes, I find out I don't like that. They need to be a little bit further down. The eyes should really start around halfway down the oval of the head. And you're going to see me go back and correct that. So that's the one thing I like about journaling and mixed media. It's very forgiving and you can cover over about anything. So as I go here, I begin to shade in her eyes. And it's not long before I figure out that they're not quite where I want them to be. So I decide I'm going to bring them down. So I just use some more gesso to go over the areas that I've previously penciled them in. And now I'm moving them down. Easy, right? 
I'm staying with that brown crayon and going in and adding some of the shadowy areas of her face, her lips, her eyes. I want to create more of a dimension to her and not just a flat face. So that's why I'm using the shading all around and even down onto her neck and shoulders. At this point, I'm just marking out where I want to add detail later. Now I go in and I use the Jane Davenport's purple ink and I'm going to put it in a little watercolor tray, just squirt it in and use water on my brush and I'm going to move that around her face. This is going to be her hair because who doesn't like purple hair, right? I love it. Her inks are so vibrant and they move and what I also like about them is that they're transparent. You can see the texture of the page underneath. And so this is always just the fun part. I just want a nice flow. I have the Roman numerals through the stencil on the left side and her hair is going to flow across the right side of the page. I really like when it gets to the point like this of this painting, of any painting, is when you get to add the details. So when you're doing something like a layered look like this in mixed media, you're starting from the very back of the background and you're just building up to the foreground. And so now I'm getting to the point where I can put in the details, I can put in the lip color, I can uh, pencil in and then paint in the eyes. I love when it's time to do the eyes because that's when it really comes to life. So that's why I'm starting here with blue, but there'll be other colors in her eyes by the time I'm done. So while her eyes are drying the first layer, I'm going back to what I had stenciled in with the light molding paste. And I want them to stand out a little bit more, so I'm using some of the inks to in my paintbrush to just rub across, and then I'm using my wet paper towel to go back and rub off the top so it's lighter and the color that I've applied shows up behind it. So I'm adding more detail to her eyes. I'm using the Jane Davenport's Mermaid Markers. If you haven't used those, they're a wonderful tool. They work like a water brush. You can squeeze them and get drops that will come down on your page or you just layer them and you can do outlines with them. You can color in. I've added some green to those blue eyes. I've added some pink to her lips with it. You can even move that color when you first put it down there. Now after a bit it will become permanent but when you first layer the color on with the mermaid markers you can move it around or even put water on it and blot it up. And so I'm just adding more and more detail, more layers to get shadowing and, and deeper areas of her lips and eyes. And then I use a watercolor pencil which is what I'm using here. I've, I've put some directly on the page for her eyebrows and then I go back and, and do some fine-tuned little hairs of her eyebrows using just a fine brush directly on the pencil and I'm splattering some white paint over it which is a very messy thing and I don't really I love the effect but I don't like doing it because now I have it all over me and my table. I used alphabet stamps to create dream and color at the end <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and you might want to hit that bell button and that'll notify you when I put up a new video each week.